Why, it's good of thee to have me, Joe. It was Colonel Russell that gave us permission. If only... If only I could get some work. Me and Mary could set up home again. Ask the Colonel, Uncle Joe. Ask the Colonel. We want no more charity. Anyhow, I hear the Colonel has troubles of his own. Colonel Russell, gentlemen of the Warwick and Birmingham Committee, the offer I've made for your canal on behalf of the Birmingham Railway is not only fair and just, it is also part of the grand and inevitable process of change. The railway locomotive is tomorrow's answer to the needs of today. He who scorns the railways scorns history and turns his back upon prosperity, both public and private, present, future, and beyond. Thank you, Sir John. We shall give your company's offer every consideration. There are those of us who believe the canals will bear as big a part in the prosperity that is to come as they have in that which is past. But I'm obliged to you, sir. Perhaps the committee will join me in drinking to our mutual interests. Your convictions do you credit, Mr. Chairman. But the railway already takes much of your company's custom. Well, not for long. The new act before Parliament empowers us to lower tolls. Ah, but I'm talking of time, trade and speed, sir. Not scrimping halfpennies. Our nearest depot at present is at Weedon, and yet a packet sent from here at Warwick already reaches Birmingham quicker by rail. Quicker still on a good horse. But I'm speaking of a regular, cheap public service, Mr. Crumlow. Take this excellent Madeira, for instance. I had the case sent up this morning by rail and wagon from the Barley Mow at Bordsley. 12.45. Not half bad. I'll wager a hundred pounds one of your boats couldn't equal that. And I'll wager you two hundred it could. Done. Gentlemen. By regular service, mind. Mm. Shall we say tomorrow? From the yard here at the Woolpack Inn? To the Barley Mow at Bordsley Wharf. The cargo? A battle of ale to drink the waterway's health. And the railway's victory. I'll appoint myself as umpire, if I may. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My manservant will await your instructions. Okay. What are you all frowning at? I didn't invite him. And I'll not take his insults. Colonel, I can understand you being angry with Sir John and the committee, but this wage is madness. You think I don't know that, Crumlow? Well, what else could I do? Business is founded on confidence. Rumours, counter-rumours, gossip. This wager will have the whole county talking. I couldn't refuse it. The boat isn't made that will match an engine running at 30 miles an hour. Well, that depends on where and when the boat starts. William! Hmm? Good afternoon, Mr. Crumlow. Your servant, ma'am. Miss Betsy. Oh, such a time we've had shopping. See here, brother. These kerchiefs. Yes, yes, my dear. It's very pretty. Look, what time do the boats normally begin working through Warwick? Between four and five, I dare say. I see. So it might just be done. Right. Just. Perhaps. Crumlow, it must be done. What must go, Father? You're quiet, child. I find me a good boat and a better boatman by nightfall. Home, Jenkins. Go on. The old tow horse won the wager. Capital! It won't be as easy to do as to say. Grandfather will win his bet. Two hundred pounds. That's more than I could save in a lifetime. Want my pocket with two hundred pounds. Catch ya! Dan! What's this then? Uh, reading and writing and stuff. Huh, that's all hokum. No, it ain't. And there really is a wager too. Grandfather's racing a boat against the railway. Tomorrow? Honest? Honest? Dan me! Mind your boat for tracing, I reckon. Oh, Dan, that's prime. 
Maybe Pa needs your next hand. Want me to ask? I'll say. Come on. Hey, what about me? This is work, miss. Not for the likes of you, Miss Betsy. These provincial watermen will provide me with a grand metropolitan triumph, Hoskins. Here's letters to the Times, the Telegraph and the Post. See them to Eden for the afternoon train. Together with this note for the Houston office. The Colonel can't win. A loaded boat makes less than four miles an hour. They've 20 odd miles and 30 odd locks to travel. The man's a fool, Hoskins. A sentimental old fool. Well, you've less than a full load here. Five guineas if you can keep about three miles an hour. Another five if you win. I'll be at Salsesford Wharf by four o'clock tomorrow. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be sharper than he looks. <laughs> None better got into Collingtree. And I trust him with boats and boaters. Please, Grandfather. Hmm? Well, may I watch the race tomorrow? No, certainly not. You can witness the finish at Bordesley with your oh, aunt. But, Grandfather... There'll be enough idle gawpers with the press. Oh, pardon me, Colonel. Miss Betsy can ride with me if she wants to. And I shan't be uh, gawping idly, I promise you. On your own head, be it, Crumlow. Well, thank you, Grandfather. Weather well, promise is fine for tomorrow. Well, can you really spare me, Uncle? Your pa'll give me a hand, I reckon. Oh, uh, a hand, that's about it. What a game we're going to have. More like fighting than sport, as far as I can see. Eh? I mean it, Tom. It's water against rail, horse against engine, past against present. Oh, that's true. When the machines come, the old crafts go. Whatever's good for trade's bad for someone somewhere. As well I know. And that's only the beginning, Tom. There'll be some decent folk ruined before we finish. You mark my words. And little the likes of you and me can do to stop it. Little's all we'll get, whatever then did. Uh, oh, what the deuce! Oh, oh. confound these country inns! Oh. By the by, Hoskins, I shall win this little bet, we know. But on the other hand, we cannot afford the slightest risk of losing. Oh, dear me, no. I should become the butt of the London clubs. I think, therefore, since nothing is certain in this uncertain world of ours, that you had better follow this wretched boat and take some, uh, how shall I put it, elementary precautions. Hmm? Exactly what I leave to your excellent imagination and the uh, judicious application of this. Come, Mr. Ambroy, you're late. No idea, Colonel. This navigation keeps such ungodly hours. Well, now. Allow me to wish you luck. I'll overtake you later at my leisure. Hoskins will follow the boat. As you wish. Mr. Crumlow can show him the way. Mr. Crumlow? Ah, oh, yes. <clears throat> to be sure. Uh, perhaps your excellent superintendent and some members of the press and your committee would care to have breakfast with me first. After all, uh, three miles an hour. There's no great hurry, is there? <laughs> I'm sure that Hoskins can find his own way. Hey, Hoskins? By all means, I wouldn't want the press to eat a biased breakfast. Hey, Cromwell. Come along, landlord. Blow.
Ready? Yeah. All right. Well, come on, lads. There's 21 locks waiting at Hatton. Never seen a steam locomotive, Miss Russell. The good Colonel has sadly neglected your education. In ten years' time, locomotives will be your only means of transport. Indeed, sir. Then what makes you so anxious to buy Grandfather's canal? Well, he's not interested in the canals, Miss Betsy. It's just the route it takes to Birmingham. Precisely. We shall simply empty it like a bath and lay rails where the fishes swam. <laughs> <laughs> Talks as if he already owns it. They'll be working up the Hatton flight now. Now, Mr. Cromlow, lead us to where we may observe the good Colonel's progress. He must have done at least five miles by now. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, come on. Go on. Cleared of Hatton in three hours. That's a guinea apiece for the crew. Now for Shrewley Tunnel and a couple of good strong leggers. Guinea for the legging. Keep it up, lads. Oh, oh well? No. Right now, leggings. Well, Oskins, I hope you're seeing fair play. Here they come! Well, Sir John, what price your railways now? <laughs> right, lads? <laughs> well done, Colonel. Well, Mr. Truck. Where's friend Hoskins, I wonder? Shake your wind last time. There's no up ahead.
My dear Miss Russell, it's a real live baronet in a temper. <laughs> Grandfather's doing famously, Aunt. I take it you're on your way to the barley mow at Bordersley? Indeed I am, Mr. Crumlow. So why I should encourage my brother in his foolishness, I really don't know. <laughs> Me neither. But we look forward to seeing you there. Come on. Yep. Thou hast a record, Colonel, sir. Funny looking cow in spectacles, galloped off on a horse. Well, you're a witness to this, sir. Well, we must crack on even harder. We're coming to you, lend a hand. Sir. You'll find I've got three good arms and legs today, sir. My regiment any day. They're coming through. It's getting close to noon now. One more lock, and it's only a question of time. Uh, I'm afraid so. We'd better get on. I don't want to leave Sir John with his newspaper cronies for too long. Come on, boy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, almost good afternoon. The interest you've been taking in my little wager is most gratifying. And I can tell you that I expect to be 200 pounds the richer very shortly. <laughs> I regret that your barrel of ale will not be here by a quarter to one. However, in the meantime, I cordially invite you all to quench your thirst at my expense. And oh, Four and a half miles an hour. Uh, we've a fighting chance. Uh, five guineas bounty if you win. What's in thunder? Ooh, Chambers. Well, what's going to do, woman? Put the nag back. Looks like he's gone home, sir. Oh, we've only three miles to go, boy. Uh, heave, man, heave. Well, I've all the gun carriage in my time. Well, if we can't win, at least we'll lose well. Oh, can't the boats go any faster? Well, given a straight road and a good crew, they might manage five miles an hour. That'd damage the banks, you see. English canals were made narrow and twisted for cheapness. Now we're paying the price. Yeah. 
His man says the colonel was going well enough. <laughs> if he gets here by a quarter to one, I'll jump into that horse trough there. Or at least, I'll get Hoskins to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Oh. All right, Colonel. Oh. Yes, I'm all right. Only more of sir. Well, hang it. Let's unload the barrel and roll it in. Dang me. Shall we? Yes. We'll unload the mark. Master Trug, your fee is double, triple. Ask anything of me you want. Right, no. The wolf pay will do nicely, sir. Mm. Hey, young Brill, you look doubtful. Not the money, sir. I'll see if I can work. Swallow me. You indeed. Please, Grandfather. Uh, we'll be needing a new keeper at Kingsdown shortly, sir. Then we'll give Mr. Brill a try. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Oh, thank you, Grandfather. <laughs> oh, Tom. <laughs> My bankers will settle according to our agreement. Your servant, sir. You've won today, Russell. And remember, the future is full of tomorrows. Indeed. Of course. We won. Aye, we won. This time. But at what cost? The steam locomotive doesn't have bruises and scars, Betsy. Doesn't feel tired and hungry like those poor lads. Aye, we won the wager. I've never in my life felt so defeated. <laughs> <laughs> 